Streamerbot is finally getting a huge update. If you guys have been waiting for dark mode, keep waiting because that's not here yet, sorry. I made a video a while back talking about how much I hate the Streamerbot UI. Why are there so many goddamn tabs everywhere? Tabs within tabs within tabs. I honestly don't blame you if you've taken one look at Streamerbot and you're like, this, I'm out. So I am happy to announce that there is a new update that massively streamlines the UI to make it way easier to use, a lot more intuitive, with way less tabs. Don't get me wrong, it still looks ass, and I'll talk a little bit later about what I plan to do about that, but things work a lot differently now. Do you hate paying full price for Windows? I hate it, it's like cringe, right? Well, you don't have to pay like full price for Windows anymore. Cause like with today's sponsor VIP SCD keys, you can pay as little as $16 for Windows 10 Pro. You can just head to the link down below and use a secure payment method like PayPal and use the code nutty at checkout to get 25% off. And then they'll just send you a key to your email that you could just shove right into your Windows settings and then that's it. You don't you don't have that cringe watermark anymore. The Windows 10 keys can also be upgraded to Windows 11 for free. Or if you want to skip all of that, you can just get a Windows 11 Pro license for as little as $22. Check it out in the link down below. First off, let's talk about that new streamlined UI, specifically the new trigger system. And I don't mean to suck myself off, but this is quite literally exactly what I suggested in a previous video. Before, if you wanted to do something simple, like let's just say you wanna make a command that when you get a follow, it plays a sound effect. Well, first you'd have to go into the actions tab, create a new action to play the sound effect. Then you'd have to dive like four tabs deep to tell StreamerBot that when you get a follow, run that action that plays the sound effect. I'm not joking, you literally had to go four tabs deep. It's so much more simple now. Now your triggers are stored in the same place that you create your actions. The easiest way that I can explain this is the actions tab is where everything happens. It's like the beating heart of StreamerBot. Everything that you create happens within the actions tab. So let's say you wanted to play a sound effect every time someone donated between one and 500 bits. So you just create the action here. You say, I want to play a sound effect. How do I want the sound effect to run? Well, I want it to run every time someone cheers bits. And then I can say only trigger this when the amount is between one and 500. And that's it. That's, that's all you need to do. And you can add as many triggers as you want here. You can make the same sound effect play every time an ad starts running in your stream, every time you start a hype train, every time you get a raid, or every time you hit the recording button in OBS, or when you change scenes in OBS. And you don't have to dive like a million tabs deep to do that because you just do it right here in the triggers menu. And get this, you can test shit now. You just like right click it, and then you click test trigger, and then you can just, you can test it. I don't know why it took so long, but you can do that now. And there are triggers for everything. There are triggers for whenever someone uses channel points in your stream, whenever someone buys merch from your stream elements page. You can even do something that automatically changes your game category every time you open up a new game. And of course, you could add a basic hotkey trigger if you don't have something like a stream deck. Although I will mention that before you can add a hotkey, you still need to go into the hotkeys tab and add the key combination that you want to use before you can add it as a trigger on the triggers page. I hate that, it's terrible, and we'll talk more about that later. You can also click the question mark icon and it'll give you a full breakdown of all your actions categorized by the different triggers that are applied to each of them. So if you want to find all your different actions that are triggered by a Twitch channel point reward, then you can just find them all here and just double click on it and it'll take you to that action so it's easier to find. Now let's say that you've made something really cool or you're a programmer and you've made something really advanced that uses a lot of code and you want to share that with a friend whose brain malfunctions every time they look at code. You can now export your actions send them to a friend and have them import that into their setup without them ever having to look at the code. Now there was always an export feature, but previously it wouldn't import any of the triggers that you made 
because there was no trigger system. You just click on export, right click all of the actions that you want to include in your export, export it to a file, give your friend that file, have them click the import button and drag that file into the import box and then click import. And that's all they need to do. Let's move on to the new chat window. So StreamerBot now has a built-in way for you to read Twitch chat or YouTube chat. You just click on chat and a new window will pop up. So this is kind of a competitor to something like Chatterino or Chatty. And this supports YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So if you're like one of those criminals that is committing a federal crime of streaming on Twitch and YouTube simultaneously, well then you could combine both of your chats into like a single stream so it's easier to read. But it has some pretty cool features built right in. So if you press Control K, you could quickly send an announcement, you can change your stream title, you can run an ad break, all without having to go to your dashboard. But because this is StreamerBot, you can also do all of your StreamerBot magic here too. So there is an execute action option that allows you to just search for any action that you've created and quickly run them. But the big feature that I've been waiting for a really long time is the new quick action bar. You can select up to five different custom actions that you've created that when you hover over anyone's message in chat, you can run that action against their message. Let's just say someone comes into your stream and is like speaking ancient Hebrew and you're like, dog, what are you, what are you talking about? I can just click on this one button over the message and it will automatically translate that message so I know what they said. I also set up a second action that when I click on the two above someone's message, it highlights their message and shows it on the screen behind me, which is good for like a Q&A style sort of thing. I can just highlight someone's question and then as I'm answering that question, their question will just appear on screen so that when new people come in, they're like, oh, that's the question that he's answering. It's a really cool way to create some unique interactions with your stream and there's, there's so many possibilities possibilities. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. In fact, I'm going to do the homework thing again. Okay. Homework time. I want you guys to create a quick action that when I click on one of the numbers, it reads out their message in text to speech. So this is what I'm expecting. Someone types in any message and then you should be able to hover over it and just click one of the quick action buttons. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of male, human, and female Pokemon breeding, Vaporeon is the most compatible Pokemon for humans? Anyway, tweet it at me when you guys figure it out. Uh, Twitter's down below. Next thing is the new global variables window. And again, I'm pretty proud of this one because I just suggested this to Nate one day. And then like a day later, he was like, oh, I did it already. So I'm, yeah, I'm pretty proud of this one. I'm going to take all the credit for it. So let's say you created a chat command that keeps track of the number of times that you've died in Mario Kart. Can, can you die in that game? Your death count would be stored in something called a global variable so that the next time that you open your stream, StreamerBot will remember the number of times that you've died. The problem is previously, there would be no way of you viewing that death count. But now if you click on the global variables button, a new window will pop up and all the different global variables that you've made will be listed in this window. And this window updates in real time. So as your death count value changes, the actual value that you see in the window will update. You can also create new variables directly in this window and edit the values of existing variables that you have. So if you wanted to manually update your death count total, you can just right click it here, click edit, and then just type in the value and press okay. This is one of the more advanced features. It's one of those like, if you know, you know kind of situations. And the final update I wanted to talk about is just all of the new integrations. StreamerBot now works with crowd control, VTube Studio. I even hooked up Nate with one of those Elgato mics. My friend wants a microphone. Sir, this is the erectile dysfunction hotline. So StreamerBot now works with Wavelink if you have one of those mics. So it is now possible to have one of your mods use a chat command in chat that will change the volume of say the music channel inside of Wavelink. So if you're in the middle of a game and your music is too loud, you can just ask one of your mods to say, hey, set the volume for the music to like 30%. There's even a new trigger that can detect whenever I open a new program. So something that I've set up is whenever I launch Apex Legends, it will automatically change my Twitch category to Apex. And then when it detects that I've closed that game, it will change the category 
back to just chatting. There's so many new integrations now, I can't spend all day looking through them because we'll be here for like an hour, but just go right click on the sub actions menu and just look at all the new sub actions and also look at all of the new triggers because, whew. I just, yeah, I just don't know what to say. So yeah, I'm very happy with this new streamer bot release. Nate has worked very hard on trying to deliver this for you guys. Here's his Patreon. Go, go give him all your money. He deserves it. Having said that, the UI is still ass, okay? It looks like it was made in Windows 95. There's a lot that needs to be done as far as making this look nicer and more approachable for new users. Obviously, you gotta add dark mode, but people always talk about adding dark mode as if it's gonna fix all of the problems with the UI. You can go and add the dark mode, it's still gonna be ass. Like, I don't like that if you want to add a hotkey trigger, you first need to go into the hotkeys tab and add the key combination you want and then add it as a trigger. Or before you could add a voice command, you have to go into the voice controls tab add the phrase you want and then add the trigger. And I don't like how the sub actions list shows things like Streamlabs when I've never connected Streamlabs to StreamerBot. Also, some of these actions are very programmery. Like it took me a solid five minutes to figure out how I could launch a program from a hotkey. It turns out you have to add a sub actions, go into core, system, perform command. So perform command is how you open programs, which makes sense if you're a programmer, but like, I, I'm not a programmer anymore. That's why I got fired. So here's what I want to do. And it's a crazy idea. I want to create a concept redesign for the entire streamer bot UI. Just, just design a concept. Okay. And then maybe I'll make a video about the design and then I'll just pitch it to Nate and the whole streamer bot team. And if they want to redesign the UI, then they can just take my tips from what I made. Or they can just be like, this is shit and we're not gonna use any of this. You just wasted your time. But let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me do that because I would really love to be a part of a massive redesign, a massive overhaul of the streamer bot UI. Because honestly, I think that's the biggest hurdle plaguing streamer bot right now. A lot of people don't even want to try streamer bot because they just hate how it looks. Anyway, check out some of the widgets I've made on Patreon, like this Zelda Ocarina widget that I made a while back, as well as many other custom made widgets for your stream for $10 a month. But just do it one month because you don't have to do it every month, okay? That's just how Patreon payments work. Okay, thank you. Also, follow me on Twitch too. Um, thank you. It would be nice to have yours. Okay, thank you. I'll see you next week.